If you have a brain, you have been fooled by disinformation. Most people think that only stupid people fall for disinformation, but this is really not true. It's a myth that disinformation loves. Because if we think we're immune, we don't put up any defenses and we become easy marks. What I mean by disinformation here is the bad actors who spread lies for power and profit. They use propaganda and technology to manipulate us into believing lies, distrusting one another, and disdaining the truth. It works remarkably well. This is something that fooled me. It's a quote from The Art of the Deal that was circulating widely after the election last year. Never admit defeat, it says. If you don't win, claim they cheated. Why did this fool me? Well, I saw it, and I instantly thought, aha! And my own smugness kept me from looking more carefully. So why is disinformation so good at fooling even smart, educated, clever people? It's the fast brain, slow brain thing. Now, you may recognize this concept from Daniel Kahneman's famous book, Thinking Fast and Slow. In it, he takes a lot of complex neuropsychology and boils it down to this simple idea, that the brain has two basic modes of operation, fast and slow. Slow brain is our reasoning and our analytical ability. It's how we solve problems. It's how we explore new territory. It takes effort. It's like walking up to the third floor. We usually prefer the elevator. Fast brain is the elevator. Fast brain is a very fast and efficient manager of routine tasks. It's autopilot. It's what drives us home from the grocery store. It is also what scans our social media feeds. Disinformation has spent over a century learning how to fool fast brain. This is a problem. Fortunately, Kahneman's work also proved that we can teach fast brain new stuff. This is how we learned how to read and write. It's how a physical therapist can see your limp and know which tendon is the problem. So learning how to recognize disinformation does take a little effort, but it is a lot easier than learning how to read. This is something we can do. The key is to know the tricks. Once you know how the tricks work, they're pretty easy to spot. The rest is just about building the habit. Look for the trick, pause, take a sec to check. It turns out <laughs> that the most commonly used, most effective trick in the disinformation playbook is to try to amuse, anger, shock, or horrify us because reason responds more slowly than emotion. In the microsecond world of social media, we are likely to act before we really have time to think. Studies show emotional content gets far more attention and far more shares, uh, and that people are far less likely to consider whether it's true or not before they share it. Now that we know that emotional responses are what make us vulnerable to lies, we can use that to train fast brain. We're going to train fast brain to notice our emotional responses and see them as a yellow flag. That's our signal to pause. So I really want you to try this. <laughs> the next time you are scrolling through your Twitter, Facebook, Insta, whatever feed, try to notice. Try to notice if something makes you feel something. Do you silently chuckle? Do you frown? Does it make you feel uncomfortable in any way? If it does, pause. Studies show that pause alone will increase our ability to detect disinformation. Pause and take a sec to check. It will take some time to build this habit, but if we keep working at it, pretty soon, fast brain takes this job on by itself and it happens automatically. Now, while we all get fooled by disinformation, 
Some of us are more vulnerable than others. This is not a matter of intelligence. It's not a matter of education. It's about anxiety and doubt. Anxiety and doubt crave clarity and answers, and disinformation is all too happy to provide those. Disinformation actually hunts for people who have anxieties. Anxiety disorders and depression are huge risk factors, but they are not the only ones. Disinformation seeks out anxious people, looks for their anxieties, and sends them messages to feed and exaggerate those doubts. They craft campaigns specifically to target certain communities, new mothers, veterans, black Americans, Spanish-speaking Americans. They're trying to peel us away from one another and away from the truth, one person at a time. This is a classic example of what I call the scary jargon trick. On one side of this disinfographic are a bunch of sort of science-y sounding words, some of which are real. On the other side are a bunch of scary words, abortion, cancer, neurotoxin. Fast brain instantly recognizes these words, and you'll feel the stress of them in your gut before you even realize what you've read. This is a more subtle version, but it's the same essential trick, right? It's a lot of science-y sounding stuff uh, designed to cast doubt on whether these new COVID-19 vaccines are safe. Now, most normal people will not have spent weeks looking into the details of this stuff as I have done, so let me clear for the record a few things. Number one, uh, FDA emergency approval means slashing bureaucracy, not slashing testing. The vaccines have been well tested. Number two, there are no fetal cells. There is no formaldehyde, no mercury in any FDA-approved COVID-19 vaccine. And third, mRNA cannot change your DNA. It cannot make you sterile. It can. Now, you may see a post of this nature and dismiss it as nonsense. But if you're all at all concerned about a new vaccine, and a lot of people are, it's a perfectly reasonable thing to be concerned about, you might wonder if there's some grain of truth to this. That's your signal. That's fast brain's signal to pause. If we learn to pause on doubt, we can keep that seed of doubt from taking root. Teach fast brain to pause on doubt, pause on smugness, pause on anger or sympathy. Pause and take that moment to check. This is a despicable piece. It's a whole fake documentary targeting black Americans, exploiting their very real history and experience of being treated kind of badly by the medical establishment. It spews a long list of lies and conspiracy theories. It uses every propaganda trick in the book. Fake experts, fake and distorted data. It just will make any claim based on absolutely nothing other than the hope that you might think that at least one of them might be true. The pace and complexity is intense, and even the most well-informed person will be shaken by it. This example, they shock you by saying that President Biden ordered the power companies to cut electricity production during the big freeze in Texas. It quotes a real document, but if you read that document, you'll see that it actually says exactly the opposite, that the Biden administration told the power companies to produce as much electricity as possible without regard to any environmental concerns. Disinformation knows that darn few people are going to read that document. People don't check the math. If you have a brain, you have been fooled by disinformation. But if you have a brain, you can fight back. When we teach fast brain to notice and pause, we change it from being our point of weakness to our first line of defense. Here's how. Number one, it's really about practice. Train fast brain to notice those emotional responses and pause. Two, take 
a sec to check. Is the piece using intentionally shocking language? Is it full of jargon or complex documents you're not going to read? Does it come from a credible source? Now, it can be really complicated to figure out what a credible source is these days. So if you're not sure, go to a well-recognized credible site. AP, Reuters, PolitiFact are all universally respected as objective, careful fact checkers. Start there. Three, respect your own doubts. If you're concerned about something, if you're confused, if you're a little bit worried, you deserve better information than you're going to get from some random Facebook post. Figure out who the recognized experts are in the field and at least see what they have to say. If it's a medical issue, talk to your doctor. Your concerns deserve your respect. They deserve credible information. Four, don't forget, we outnumber the bad guys. A recent report showed that the vast majority of online vaccine disinformation originated with just 12 sources. There are more of us than there are of them. We just need to stick together and be a little nice to each other along the way. We can take power back from disinformation. All it takes is some practice.